stick. In this case, Japanese Hanbo, which means just the shorter stick. It's 36 inches. It's an inch diameter. I like a little bit bigger. You can go a little bit smarter, smaller for weight and diameter. But about this long, about 36 inches, you get this at a neat hardware store. I got this for half price. It was like $3.99. They're normally $7.99. And somewhere around there. A little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of mineral oil. And you have yourself a homemade self-defense walking stick. I'm going to show you how to use it. This is a basic warm-up. You're just turning from side to side. You're going to do 30 seconds per hand. Just get blood to flow into the joint. Keep the joint safe from injury during this training, during this workout. After you do that in one hand, you're going to go from one hand to the other. Side to side, this is increasing the amount of stretch that you're going to get as you're working with your homemade self-defense walking stick, the Japanese or Okinawan Hanbo. Side to side. Hello, Brandon. It's good to see you. Good afternoon. Now, that's about all you need for a proper warm-up so that you can stay safe from injury while you're training with your homemade self-defense stool. This is the Japanese Hanbo or a walking stick. It's 36 inches. Comes from the hardware store. You can get these just about anywhere. Hello, David. Good to see you. Uh, a little bit of sandpaper. Knock the rough stuff off. Get it nice and smooth. And then oil it. The more oil you can get to soak into your homemade self-defense tool, the walking stick, the more flexible it's going to be, the more flexible it is, the less likely it will break when you're using it for self-defense or when you're training with it. Now, we're going to get right into the basic strikes, how to use this homemade self-defense tool. It's a walking stick, so you're leaning on it. The first thing you're going to do is slide your hand down the back of the walking stick. So from here in a natural position where you would be leaning on it, you sense the threat, you're preparing yourself, you slide your hand here. Now, you have this position. The first strike I want you to practice today is going to be turning and immediately striking for self-defense into someone's face or maybe into the neck, into the ribs, into the legs. But from this position, slide the hand down and simply turn your hips, turn your shoulders, turn your hand over. The elbow comes up a little bit as you bring that through either in a horizontal strike, you can bring it in coming up in a diagonal strike, you can bring it up and down over the top coming down a di diagonal strike, or it can kind of swing up and as it's coming through this U shape, upside down U, this arc, smash them right across the face for self-defense. That's the first thing we want you to practice. So step forward like you're walking with your walking stick, you slide your hand down, here comes the threat, and simply lift and strike. Just practice, turn from here, practice turning your hip, and you can hear that that's going very fast, it's creating a lot of energy, and you're gonna be striking with the tip. Don't think about laying this up across the side of their head, think about this taking an eye out for self-defense, or smashing the temple or the jaw or into the ear, or into the neck for self-defense. Just the end of this here. Now, if you happen to hit them with that hard piece of oak, this one's oak, again, less than 10 bucks. You get the whole thing for less than $10. This one's less than $5 all in. A homemade self-defense tool. No matter how you hit them, it's going to either stop their forward motion, stop them from hitting you, from hurting you for self-defense, or you might just cause them to pull back and Take a second uh, guess, you know, second guess themselves. Think, you know, maybe I don't want to try to hurt this person. So your goal is to defend yourself. You're using your homemade self-defense tool, the hanbo or the walking stick. Your hand slides down. That's your first motion. I want you to practice, and I want you to do it in both hands so that you become ambidextrous. From here, your hand slides down the back. Take a nice firm grip. You have about this much facing the top, facing the sky, and then you turn and strike. The second way you're going to strike from that same position. Your hand's here, you slide down the back, you're gonna bring it in straight into the nose, teeth, into the throat, into the solar plexus with a strike, like a thrusting, jabbing motion. From here, if you step into it, it's gonna hit even harder. But if you don't have time to step in or you're not as mobile, you don't have as great, maybe your hips aren't that great, or your knee, or you're not as strong as you used to be, you can simply lift and let the oak do the job, let the wood do the job. It's not gonna be the strongest strike in the world, but you don't need a lot of strength when you're sticking this piece of wood into the nose or into the eyes, into the teeth, into the soft flesh on the person's body who's trying to attack you. 
For self-defense, you just need to stop their forward motion. They're coming in to hit or grab or stab. You stick that right in his face. Then from here, practice your second motion. That's the first thing that you learn. So in this video, from here, slide down, thrust, turn. Thrust, turn. I hit him here in the face, and then I just bring this around, smashing along the side of the head, going for temple, jaw, neck. It's a very fast, powerful, effective move. Now from here, uh, good afternoon, bearded gentlemen. It's good to see you. I want you to slide down in the same way, strike here, go through here, and then bring it into the other hand so that it's almost like a rifle with a bayonet on the end. From this position, two-handed thrust right through the middle of their body. That could finish them off. That is going to be a very powerful strike. From here, I'll put it in this side so you can see. Or let's face this way. This guy right here, right? He's just got a head. I'm going to slide down, go right into his face, smash through here, bring it into this other hand, and then I'm going to step and thrust, or I can lift it up and coming down here, or with two hands, just blast through the middle. But the point is you've got two hands on it, you're much, much stronger because now you've got this leverage. You've got this hard bar of hard wood. This case is oak, smashing through the nose, the teeth, the throat. So once again, before we move on to the next technique, you're sliding along here on the back, coming straight here, coming across this way into the other hand, thrusting here or across and back or from the chest straight through the middle. And you can slow it down and practice. Make sure you've got good technique. Sliding here, one, two, into that other hand, three or four or five, or all three, three, four and five, right? The idea is the fight's not over till you win. You wanna go one, two, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Start to gradually speed up as you go through the striking combination. And I did see the question about the shark's teeth. I'm gonna answer the question. The question was, um, some canes, if you, go to, if you go to my link below to, I think it's in there, to the self-defense protector canes, then you'll see what shark's teeth really look like. They're just um, little, they're like indentations that have been routed into the wood. And yes, those will rip the skin. I'll show you how to use those. I'll show you on one of the canes what those look like, or on my protector staffs or the collie sticks. Those are pretty wicked too. All right, second way I want you to think about getting into a protective position is sliding your hand down the front. Now, down the back or down the front doesn't matter. What matters is that you defend yourself and that you respond as quickly as possible. Immediate, direct, explosive. Work all the hesitation out. Just grab it and stick it in his face. Smash. And then from here, you can be in any hand position within a matter of seconds. You don't have to think about it too much. In fact, the more you think, the more time passes, the more time passes, the more likely you are that you're going to be on the floor in a pool of blood. The less you think, the more you train, prepare or perish, the faster you can get that across his face and then in the fight in your favor for self-defense. It's all about self-defense. Now your hand slides down the front and then you lift it. Think about pointing it right in his face, right? You're sticking that in his face so that he has to look around your stick just to come in and hit you. From here, you can thrust immediately. In fact, that's the first thing I like you to practice. If this is the threat, my hand's on the top, I'm leaning on my walking stick, I slide my hand down the front, and without any thought, I'm gonna thrust straight into his face. Once I realize I don't have a choice, in a self-defense situation, if you can inflict damage onto him before he inflicts damage onto you, you're likely going to be able to survive that self-defense situation. So you wanna be the first mover. You wanna stick this here and straight through. In fact, you can practice from here, and as you're lifting, thrust, and see how I keep this close to my body. I don't wanna be out here. I wanna be as close to the center line of my body as possible. That keeps all the pressure off your shoulder, and it's a stronger strike. Now, if you extend and turn your shoulders, you get more power. If you extend and turn your shoulders and step with your foot, bring your body through his face, you get a lot more power. It's all about striking with enough power to end the fight. In this fight, stopping power comes from full extension, then rotation, and then moving the body. 
or doing all three simultaneously because you've practiced it so much, it becomes natural for you. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, crawl, walk, run, but do something, practice. Slide down, pick it up, stick it through his face, and then pull it to your shoulder. From here, you're gonna strike and lay him open across the side of his head for self-defense. Ideally, you hit him so hard here, it knocks him out and he falls to the ground. You don't have to worry if he's got a gun or a knife or if there are multiple attackers, he's out of the fight for self-defense. You're gonna win that one. So from here, down the front, lift it, stick it through the middle. That stops him from coming forward. He's gotta do something with the stick. Before he can hit you again, you pull it into your shoulder and then back out across the side of his face, across his neck, his arm, his shoulder. Maybe he's reaching. You're gonna smash that wrist, break that joint, or smash that arm, smash that elbow, break that joint. But you're from here, you're again, again turning the shoulders, extending that arm, and then if you can, taking a step to finish the job for self-defense. So from here, slide down the front, thrust, strike, and then from here, let it come into that other hand again. Now notice that I have kind of a push-up position. From this hand position here, I'm gonna turn my body and strike with my entire upper body. The core muscles in the front and the back of your body are extremely strong. That's what you are now hitting him with, with this levered self-defense tool. This long piece of oak coming through his temple, through his jaw, through his neck, in through the arm, and blasting as hard as you can. And from here, that backward thrust, just like a bayonet, a bayonet attack or bayonet strike. From here, I can slide my hand down the front, bring my hand down the back, and smash hard over his head. From here, I can thrust through again, I can slide my hand, I can box the sides of his head, I can smash it straight in and through his face. And you will be able to do this too if you slow it down and practice. From here, one step through from your shoulder, bring it to the other hand, turn, thrust, change hand position, bring it down, change hand position, box to the side of the face, pull it in and push. And one more time, if you wanna practice that in combination, simply slide down the front, aim, thrust through his face from the shoulder, across his temple, into the other hand, turning your whole body with that step, bringing it through, thrusting back, sliding to the front, coming down, hands in the middle, smash him in the face, boxing the sides of the ears, and then smash at the end. It doesn't matter when you smash him, just smash him through his face. There's this idea that you can, it's not an idea, you can do all kinds of blocking techniques, both in this hand position and in this hand position. A lot of them are circular in nature. You can slide in and you can twist it up around his back. It's hard to do on yourself. Bring it around his back. You can do all that stuff, right? You can parry. He can bring the thing in, you can block it, boom, and then strike. You can do all that stuff, but again, for the purpose, that's more martial arts side. That's the hanbo. You're in the ninjutsu class or you're in an Aikido class, or you're taking a, a Bojutsu class, um, or a, uh, you know, some class where there's a lot of emphasis on weapons, maybe in your style of martial art. You can do all the martial arts stuff. You can do all the fancy spins and all the other stuff. That's great, but for self-defense, for self-defense, if you have a choice to hit first or block his first attack, don't try to, don't try to time the attack and be, be the one that blocks, right? You can if you have a lot of experience. However, if, you, if it's life or death, he's got a knife, he's got a gun, you don't know what's coming out. I would rather see you stick this right through his face, create distance, smash, thrust, smash, do whatever you can, turn his lights out so you don't have to worry about, is your timing perfect? Or, you know, he might have just gotten out of the penitentiary, right? And in the penitentiary, they know how to stick knives into people and they know how to go from this hand to this hand, you didn't even see it. They know how to pull it out. You don't even know that there's a knife in their hand until it's already stuck in your body 13, 20, 50 times. So for the purpose of real self-defense and not just theoretical martial arts, fancy, cool stuff, I love it, but don't get so deep in the theoretical woods that you get stabbed to death. Stick it through his face. Stick it through his face. Instead of blocking, blast him. Blast right through and then hit as hard as you can and don't stop until the fight's over. It's a self-defense principle. The fight's not over until you win. Those are just some ways I want you to practice using your martial arts staff. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate that.
Um, $50, that's a huge donation for me that will help quite a bit. I just I started upgrading a little bit of my camera gear and I'm just going into pocket credit. I gotta pay rent again, I'm a little bit overdue. So that kind of stuff really helps. I really appreciate that. It's very much appreciated. All right, so from here, slides down the front, you bring it up, you thrust it, slash here, comes into the other hand, bring it through here, come in, see how my hands are into the body? This is very important. If your hands are out here, it's hard for accuracy's sake, but it also, when your hands are this far away from your body, all the pressure is up here on the shoulder. Most people don't have the strongest shoulders in the world. Even strong people don't have super strong shoulders because they're such small muscle groups compared to the whole body. When you bring this in here, now my shoulders aren't doing the work. My chest, my back, my forearms, my grip, and my whole core and moving my feet, my legs, everything's doing the strike. So when you hit from this position, as opposed to this position, in this position, you're gonna drive right through him, through his soul, as I like to say, for self-defense. Out here, you might hit, and then later have, a, have to have rotator cuff surgery because you've injured your shoulder. So think about proper technique for self-defense is always gonna be closer to the body, and you're always gonna be directing your force and your energy straight through. Now, can you, in this position, come into a turning position, or from this position, turn and strike, turn and strike, you can, and I will teach you that. But first, I wanna know that you can stand your ground, and as he's coming in, stick that through his face, and then maybe bring that up under his chin, down across his jaw, in through his nose, and then across the side of his face for self-defense. Later, when we put on the martial arts clothes, and we're wearing the hakama, it looks like that skirt, the split legs, and we're bowing and namaste each other, we can, do more of the, the cool stuff. Nothing against that, just different different um, application. Yeah, Hank said, thanks, Steve. Steve, again, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I started a new unit. I'm gonna give you guys a, a pro tip in case anybody ever struggles with weight. I do this once a year when I work with kids, and I'm working with kids again. I have a unit in this curriculum that I teach that builds confidence and focus and discipline in the classroom, and I don't call it martial arts. I call it... We're calling it whole body listening. We used to call it self-regulation. I've been doing this for 30 years, but every year I get to the jumping unit. Hello to, uh, hello D from New Zealand. And when you jump, your body leans out faster. So all my pants are getting too loose and I'm constantly pulling them up now. That's how I know I'm jumping. That and my feet are a little sore at the end of the night. As you get older, that happens. But it's a good way to keep yourself young and healthy and the brain science shows when kids do that jumping, not only does it keep them from injuring their legs and their knees and their ankles later on in life, because they have strong legs, knees, and ankles, but it's also good for brain development. When exercise is vigorous, complex, and done in a focused way, you create new neural pathways in the brain and new stem cells are released that become thoughts or memories or cognitive ability or go in parts of your body that are injured, but it also leans you out so much faster. Yeah, David, it's, it's the jumping. I gotta be honest, jumping and then the last unit before this was obstacle courses. A lot of zigzag, a lot of cross body stuff. Everything I do is brain science. Been doing it for so long. I've worked with uh, uh, children and adults on the autism spectrum for 30 years. And everything that I do is developed or is focused on, not just them, because I think we're all on the spectrum, but getting, unlocking, unlocking stuff and making the brain grow. If you can get the brain to grow when it's been delayed for some reason when they're younger, you'll be shocked at what kids can do. A lot of it's anecdotal, but it's not all anecdotal. There's a lot of science behind what I'm saying. Anyway, last thing, you're holding it in this position. From this position, you could be walking, you simply turn the palm up, or you turn the palm down. If you turn the palm up, you're in a split grip or the hands facing each other. From this position, think about a sword, Right? Anytime you strike with a sword, a uh, Japanese sword, you keep the, or Korean, keep the hands apart, right? And you would also turn your wrist like this so they don't get cut off, but we're not fighting against a sword. We're fighting against a bad guy with a skateboard. So from this position, I'm just holding the middle, walking down the street, walking the dog, worried about some uh, other guy's dog or some dog off the chain. I don't want him to bite my dog, so I got my stick. Or the neighborhood's turning. There's a lot of craziness in the world right now. Crime rates, violent crime rates are exploding just about everywhere. It's not just in certain cities anymore. 
it's starting to creep. The price of everything's going up. People are becoming more desperate. When I stop and get gas in just a period of one month, the number of panhandle, aggressive panhandlers and homeless has gone from one every once in a while to like three or four. It's like they have a con convention right now. They're all hanging out and everybody's aggressively talking. And sometimes, you know, they might be, um, there might be a need for you to physically defend yourself is the point. And I don't walk around in a sense of, sense of fear. I walk around with a sense of situational awareness, just paying attention, being mindful. If you don't have to be there, don't be there, right? Run, hide, fight, get out of there if you can. But if you have to, turn your palm up. You're in this position, striking down, striking to the sides, striking, think ribs, think knees, right? These basics of uh, Japanese swordsmanship, straight strikes, and then you have horizontal strikes, horizontal strikes from this position. You can also ring your hand up here. You can thrust. This is one of my favorite types of thrusts. You can do that behind you. I think we were doing that with the Joe yesterday, but you can thrust through. You can strike from here. You can also blast in the same way. You can box the sides of the heads in the same way. This is not going to be any worse than this. You're still gonna be able to create maximum amounts of damage for self-defense. Or instead of turning your palm up, turn your palm over. Now you're in this position. From here, striking, bringing it across. All of these strikes can be done in the same way. You're just in a different hand posture. This might not feel the same as this. It might not be as comfortable. But once you practice a little bit, you'll start to realize these are really good, powerful, hard strikes. So you can do your thrusting through here. You can do your twisting up here, turning your body, your hips, your shoulders. That's a deflecting block or that's a strike up along the side of the head, similar to where we started with that first strike. But from here, turn, thrust up through, down over the head, up into the body, pushing through the middle, boxing to the sides of the head. And as a finishing move, strike. From here, bringing it up here, this is a traditional block. This is the way that you would get behind your stick, right? Get behind it and under it. But continuing that motion, and see how close I keep that to my head? That's in case maybe you're on the bus, you're in the train, there's not a lot of room, or you're inside, you're in a confined space, and it's a low ceiling. That also keeps you from bringing your hand up here. Anytime you're striking from up here, if they close that distance, it's gonna wrap right around their body. You're not gonna hit them at all. If you're here and they close that distance, that's gonna run right into them. It's gonna hit them some way, right? Because it's coming from here, straight forward. From here, it has to come down and in. This is the worst way to strike, but this is very common. Almost everybody strikes this way until they train. So from this position, practice, See my left hand? My left hand is just kind of a pivot point and then let this hand out of the way and strike through. Practice from here, one. And this is actually a blocking motion, right? If the punch were coming in, you would lift their hand up. You have to kind of use your imagination. I don't have anybody to practice with, but then you would come through from here, striking. One, two. From this shoulder, straight through, one, two so just practice that and then slide your hand on the other side and practice on the other side from here st striking through here striking through i notice on my left side i'm not as tight that gives me something to practice that gives you something to practice when you watch yourself again thank you so much for that generous donation i have to go teach the kids again i just had a quick lunch break i will be back later tonight and i'll see you guys